Hello, Leo. My name is Paul, and this is Dove and Serpent Tarot. This is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger, and I ask that you connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I might provide. And if there is anything you need me to pray over or meditate upon or send positive energy toward, please let me know. And remember, Leo, that the most important part of any tarot reading is you. And a two of wands. Interesting. That is a lot of a power, a lot of uh, assertiveness. There might be a creative decision that we need to make right. Let's put this into some context. And then we have a six of wands. We've got a lot of fire energy now. And we're getting some water. Ah, okay. Okay. Hmm. All right. Devil energy. Very interesting. Yeah, I'm getting this sense that we are we're really turning something around, right? We've got this kind of, this negative energy back here. I kind of feel like this is similar to the last reading that we did for you, where we're trying to get away from some sort of negativity, some sort of this, um, almost a pessimism, right? And this is kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy. It's just like, we feel like things aren't going very well, and then they don't go very well, right? But this is behind us and beneath us. We are rising above. We are making uh, a lot of creative choices right now. We are taking the lead. We are taking control. And I feel like we are making progress in pursuit of our goals. Um, this, is, this is really good. Let's select the mystery card, bonus card, confirmation card. This is one random card from the Smith Weight Tarot. Uh, we're just going to set this aside. We'll put Mr. Dow, the yin-yang duck, right there on top now. Leo, we're not going to look at that card until the very end. Okay, so you do have to stick around. And hopefully that card will tie everything together and give us the confirmation that we need. But we're also doing something a little different. If at any point during the reading you get an idea, a sense, a feeling of what that card is, I want you to type your prediction into the comment section of this video. I want to see if we can collectively raise our vibrations, tap into spirit, tap into our intuition, and start discerning that mystery card together, okay? But first, let's take a look around the room. We've got two major arcana cards. And this is very interesting um, because we have the lovers, which is kind of, which is about choice and union of coming together with something, with, with a passionate kind of energy, right? marrying ourselves to something or someone, of course. And then we also have the devil energy, which is kind of this, um, this uh, I don't know, this solo climb up the mountain, right? So it's, this is, this is going to be interesting to talk about these two and how they might be interacting with each other. We also have a lot of fire energy. Got some water energy. No air energy. Uh, except for this, the Lover's card is a Gemini card. There's some air energy here, right? Uh, and there's a little bit of air energy in the Prince of Cups. And then we've got our Earth cards up here. Okay, so that's the elemental breakdown. Uh, let's see, there are no real Swords cards here. So I feel as if um, this isn't really... Um, this isn't an intellectual exercise. This isn't a rational kind of problem that you're trying to solve. I think you feel a certain type of way about what's in your life or what might not be in your life. And we are making energetic, creative choices to correct that, to get what we want, to combine our forces with what we're after, to, um, to passionately pursue our goals and make positive changes. We've got this two of pentacles, so that means we're going to have to spin our yes, no coin. But let's talk about this fire energy in the middle first. Because it seems to me there's kind of a, a competition happening. We got this two, the two of wands. Right? To me, this feels like uh, 
there's some kind of a, a clash. There's there are two wills that are battling it out. And they could be uh, in you, both of them, uh, two separate inspirations, right? You feel t maybe two things very, very strongly. Right? Maybe we're trying to find a way to to marry the different aspects of our of ourselves. Uh, different ideas that we have, different aspirations, different interests, different passions. Maybe we're trying to find a way to combine them together, right? So that the, the two or the many become one, right? Because we do have this idea of union here with the lovers, right? The two becoming one. Now, it doesn't mean that there's only two. The two could be representative of a lot. All right, many. One, two, three, a ton. Um, but I feel like we are, we're not so much trying to intellectualize it. We're not making a pros and cons list. Right? We're not having discussions. We're not thinking about it day and night. We're trying to feel it. What do I feel passionately about? What is it that I really feel inspired to do? See, we've got this fire energy that is here as a, a counter to these rather dark earth and water cards, seven of pentacles and eight of cups. This was basically saying that, look, things, things haven't been working out and you've been feeling some kind of way about it, right? We're kind of looking at our cup as being half empty and what is left in there is draining out, right? It's a cup, a cup that's half empty and it's got a crack in it. So we're trying to fix that. Right, we're trying to get out of this. This is kind. Of, these two together. This is kind of some quicksand. Okay. Now, with the seven of pentacles in the recent past, I wonder if we have um, kind of tried and and failed at something. Right. If we were trying to to reach a goal, uh, a success, a milestone, trying to achieve something, it didn't work out. Right. It happens. The key word for this card is failure. And that's such a bad word. That's such a taboo word, right? Failure. I did not succeed. Well, that's how we learn and grow, right? Failures are learning experiences. Failures really are just prototypes for success, right? So we have to learn what doesn't work. And we have to keep trying. We have to keep going forward. I think that's what you're doing. I don't mean to be too cliche about a seven of, of pentacles, but... We were expecting a different outcome here. We didn't get what we were expecting, right? We thought we'd have some nice fruit on the vine here, but it didn't turn out that way. And that's all right. We're still moving forward. Inside, you feel a little bit of this Eight of Cups, right? I mean, it's, it's only natural that these two can go together. But we don't want to let this become a quicksand. We don't want to let this deter us from taking any further action. These two cards together, for a lot of people, I think this would just, we would throw in the towel. we say, I'm just stuck here. I give up. Right? We'd sink deeper and deeper and deeper into these feelings. But not you. Not you. You've got this idea that you're going to kick this thing's ass. We've got the two and the six. So you're certain that you're going to figure out what wasn't working but not figure it out intellectually, that we're going to figure it out perhaps with our feeling. But I think more than that, we're going to figure it out through, through doing, right? We've got a lot of fire energy here. And even in the Capricorn energy, this is fire of earth, right? This is like a, a volcano kind of energy. It's the kind of fire energy, the kind of creative and passionate will that can move mountains, that, that will move mountains. And I don't know if you can hear, but my cat is scratching at the door. She's ready to move mountains too, right? She's trying to move the whole studio uh, a couple feet over. Uh, I really like the six of wands here. This is this is real confidence, right? This is um, this is confirming for me that we're going to have victory over this. This conflict that we are experiencing, this um, this kind of duality, this multiplicity in our energy that we feel, where there are maybe a lot of options, 
right? We're trying to maybe unify everything into one, one will, one path, right? Maybe one project. Um, I feel like whatever you're, whatever you're doing in your life, maybe this is a work thing, maybe this is something personal, maybe it's a business that you're starting. Um, all of these ideas that you have, I feel like you are finding a way to unify them. I would bet that the mystery card will be an ace of something. Um, but there's a, there's a confidence here, right? That even though we've had setbacks, we're not giving up. We're not giving up. We're pushing forward. So the six here is very nice. That's an overcoming of whatever obstacles are in your way right now. I feel like this too is kind of the obstacle and you're just, I mean, you're finding ways to just break that obstacle down, okay? And we're reaching this unity. This is, the, this is a marriage here. This is a real uh, ceremony of you coming together with whatever. It could be a person, maybe. Uh, maybe a, there's a Scorpio person in your life. Um, it's you marrying yourself to your path. That if you had conflicting ideas or inspirations, conflicting wills, we are overcoming that and we're finding this unity. Okay? That's what the lover's, called, lover's card is all about. Unity. Marrying things together. Gluing things together. But we've got to talk about the Two of Pentacles. For this card, whenever we get a Two of Pentacles on this channel, we have to spin our yes-no coin. So what I want you to do is think of a yes or no question. In your mind, say it out loud, whatever. You don't have to put it in the comment section if, unless you want to. And I'm going to spin this coin. Now, I'm not going to flip it because I have lights and cameras and stuff up there. So we'll spin this coin. Uh, so think of your question. And I'll go ahead and spin this. It doesn't have to pertain to whatever this current situation is or whatever these cards are. But we'll see how it might apply to the reading after we spin. Here we go. The answer is yes. The rather disruptive yes, right? It's a yes that are, is going to upset some people. As we, as we knocked around our guardians there. It's a yes that might upset some people, okay? With the two of pentacles, I'm feeling that the decisions that you make, the steps that you're going to take, this is, this is proactive here. This is a lot of steps in the right direction. This is you doing stuff, right, in the physical realm. Again, there's no air energy. There's no decisions, really, right? There is, there is kind of one decision, one choice, and that is you're committed to this thing, right? That's the only air energy that we really need. And that's, that's the one. That's gluing everything together. Now you start on the practical steps. What's the first thing I have to do? Right? How do I turn a negative into a positive? Right? Um, the choices that you make are not always going to please everybody. Right? That's where you need this confidence. That's why we have Jupiter in Leo with this one. This is your... This is your Leo confidence here, okay? Um, it might disrupt things for, I think, for other people in your life. That is kind of going to have to be okay, right? As we say, that's Dallas, right? Uh, so the answer is a yes. Should you do the thing? Yes. Yes, you should. Now we move to the path of the serpent. We've got... This Capricorn energy, are you doing this yourself? And this is where we kind of have an interesting dilemma with these two cards because the Capricorn energy is kind of the solo climber, right? And yet we see with the lover's card, there's the idea of kind of uniting with, with others, right? So it might be a situation where we're committing ourselves to our path, to our work, our business, our plan, whatever we're doing, right? Our art, um, whatever, whatever that is. And we're going to go ahead and start climbing the mountain because we're committed to making this thing a success. 
And if nobody wants to come with us, that's fine. If people can't climb as fast as you, that's fine too. If people are still stuck in this quicksand, maybe there were others, other that people you were collaborating with, other partners, perhaps. If they're still stuck in this quicksand, that doesn't mean you have to be. You can continue to climb because you have this Capricorn energy. This is intensely creative, right? This is unbridled creative energy. That's just, that is out in the world creating, doing things, making moves. Yeah, you had a setback. We all have them. You're out there making moves, creating, right? We're answering in the affirmative. It's a yes. Should you do that thing? Yes. Is it going to disrupt other people's lives or perception? Or is it going to, to disrupt the, the quicksand that they're in? Yes, probably. Are you going to have to climb solo? Maybe. And if you do, that's okay. Now, because we have the lover's card, this doesn't necessarily mean that you're joining a group or that you're married to somebody else, or that you have a partner. This is you committed to your path. The people around you may come and go, right? The details of that path may change. You're committed to this thing, and that's why we move directly from the lover's card. You have to make the decision. Are you ready to do this? With everything that it implies, if you're ready, here, we can start climbing. We're getting out here. Yes, we're starting to make some moves, take the first step break ground, get to base camp, start climbing, okay? First thing we encounter on this climb is the Prince of Cups in the position of your environment, all right? This might be that other person. There might be someone else here involved. Could be a Scorpio person, could be a water, uh, water sign person generally. And, um, I kind of feel like I kind of feel like there's an inauthenticity here. I almost wonder if this other person in your life is kind of reflecting back to you what they think you want rather than being true in what they're telling you. I don't think they're speaking their truth to you. Okay? I think they're showing you what they think you want to see. Because the Prince of Cups is an energy that is, most cases, trying to be authentic. Because there's water on the outside. And that water really just kind of reflects the light that's being shined on it. Right? Reflects the energy that's, that's being provided. Just gives it right back. So it's kind of like whatever, what you want to see, what the vibe of the room is, is what I'm projecting. There's air inside here. There's a different element inside there. What you see with this is not what you get. Or what you see is not really what there is. I don't know how to say that. Um, there's more than meets the eye here. Okay. And I don't know who this person is. Maybe they're not a water sign person. The water could be just what we're talking about here. I think it's somebody who's a peer, somebody that's generally your age, someone that might be part of this with you. Maybe there was a team effort, a collaboration of some kind, a partner of some kind, right? Someone in your life, perhaps. This card could also be talking, but this is the card of the environment, okay? And since this energy is in your environment, this is kind of making me feel like maybe you're attracting certain types of people to you. Um, but kind of the wrong kind of people, right? Uh, this is telling me that you should be careful of who or what you're attracting based on your your emotions, what you're projecting out into the world, right, is attracting a certain type of energy back, right? Because the environment is the Prince of Cups. The environment around you is reflecting whatever energy you're putting into it, right? This might not be a person. This could be all people. It could be the environment as a whole, okay? 
So be careful what kind of vibes you're putting out because you're going to be attracting that same kind of energy. Okay. Yeah. Um, we have uh, this as the obstacle. And this is kind of funny. This is, um, this is the seven of, of wands here. And this is a very, very Leo reading, right? This is, I don't, couldn't get much more Leo than this. Uh, the seven of wands is Mars in Leo. It's the position of what we don't want. It's the, it's the card of confidence, but it is, it is kind of, it is right in between the six, right? The six is confidence. The six is like we've, we've succeeded. We have attained victory over whatever this uh, dilemma was, this, whatever this conflict was that we felt within us. Maybe this is a conflict in our external world, but we've experienced some, a, a win, right? We have victory over that. That victory is giving us the confidence of the seven. Now, the seven could go too far and become an eight and a lot of wasted effort with the eight, right? The seven is the confidence that we feel coming off of that win of the six, right? But this card's in the position of what we don't want. We don't want this confidence to get out of hand. We have to kind of, we have to stay in control. We have to stay kind of humble, right? It's a very delicate thing, this confidence in the sense that if it goes too far, like I said, it becomes an eight of wands. And an eight of wands is force that is just dissipating in every direction. It's too much confidence, right? That fizzles out real quick. So we need to keep the seven more like a, like a 6.5, right? We're coming off of this win. We feel good. We feel like we can conquer anything. And that's good energy to have, but we have to be careful with it. We don't want to let it go too far. Okay, we don't want to be overconfident. All right. Um, this is a card that says that when you're climbing this mountain, right, you don't want to have this kind of hubris where I don't need oxygen, I don't need the crampons, you know, on your boots. Um, I don't need to wear gloves or whatever. Like, I can do it. And you're just, you're trying to run up Mount Everest, you know, that kind of thing. That's not going to work. That's not going to last. So it's okay to be confident, but let's also be um, controlled, contained, right? The Mars aspect of this card is the Leo energy that can just go berserk sometimes. And there's a time and a place for going berserk, but now's not that time, right? But is it? Because let's look at the next card. Three of Pentacles. This is understanding the process of creation on the physical plane. And guess what? This card is Mars in Capricorn. We have Capricorn down here that's at the, the beginning. Maybe this Seven of Wands is saying there's going to be a time and a place for you to just kind of go berserk, right? To just run as fast as you can. It's a sprint right? Maybe not the whole time. This card, especially with the three, understanding the process, understanding when is the right time for you to do this sprint? When is it the right time for you to go berserk with this thing? I think that's the big, that's the big question here. Do you know, will you know, when is the right time for that energy, that berserk energy? right? It's, it's not all the time. So when are you going to use this, right? When do you pull this card out of your sleeve and, and do that sprint, make that push, go berserk, have that fury and that rage to push through that whatever next obstacle is, right? So that it's very important for you to know when to use this. And it's interesting that we have such a Mars Capricorn, Mars, Leo, more Capricorn connection here. So I, I, I don't know what the Capricorn connection really is, if that has something to do with the project that you're working on, but to me it feels like it's the, uh, it's the solo climb up the mountain 
um, maybe with or without a group. I don't know. It, it all depends on, um, you know, this kind of energy here and these, basically these energies here of what we are, what we are um, aspiring to, right? What we are creating with this Three of Pentacles. It's very, very Leo reading here. Let's select the, uh, or let's look at the mystery card here. Thank you, Mr. Dow. This is the point of the reading where I'm gonna ask you to connect with these energies, right? Uh, I'll switch the camera. Let's try to raise our vibrations. Let's tap into source. Let's tap into our intuition. Let's see if we can discern this mystery card together. Put your predictions into the comments section but try not to give the answer away because there are people that will be watching this video sometime after you watch it. All right, well, I kind of think it's going to be some air, right? I think we need a little bit of that discernment to know when is the right time to pull this card out, right? I'm feeling some air energy here. No, it's not. It's not Aaron. It's a four of, of wands. And the four of wands is completion. It's, uh, I think if you get all of this timing right, if you know when to do this kind of fury, this rage, this berserk energy, you're going to complete this project. You're going to reach maybe not the summit, but a summit, a plateau, a resting point, a camp, right? A finish line. It's not the finish line. You're going to complete this thing. You're going to, you're going to achieve success here. So this is kind of cool. This is taking all of this effort and going really from a three to a four, but it's a creative four. It's a four that is the completion of your kind of original fire energy, um, your inspiration, your idea, right? your will. So this is, this is really cool. I like the image on the Four of Wands because it feels like you're kind of, um, you've made it. You're just about to cross the finish line. You're just about to, to walk into the next camp where you can rest and replenish. Yeah, there's more journey to go after, but this is a good stability. This is a good kind of temporary campsite, you know. This is really good. I like this. We're going to do an extended reading. If you want to stick around, click either above or below in the video description. New readings for Leo every Tuesday and Saturday, 6 a.m. Chicago time. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell. Uh, hit the like button. Leave a comment. Um, Leo, I want you to remember that you are the most important part of Dove and Serpent Tarot. I thank you, and I love you, and we're all in this together.